Hello what culture, my name is Simon Miller and welcome to this week's episode of Smackdown Ups and Downs and unfortunately I do have some sad news before we get into it. If you haven't seen Smackdown and you are tuning in to Ups and Downs to get your recap, well, Lacey Evans did not appear. She didn't walk down the aisle, turn around and then walk back up the aisle and it also means we didn't hear like a lady, look like a lady. I apologize. You will not be getting my reaction to that today. But there's still plenty of good stuff we can get onto when we're talking about WWE's Tuesday night show, especially the promos. Now, I have no idea whether these promos were scripted or not, but at least they felt real. And we didn't have anyone on the microphone saying things like, when I walk down the road and I think about my opponent, Dark Cloud, start to fathom in my mind. Stop, Matt. Bull, you know how it goes. And if you didn't see it yesterday in Raw Ups and Downs, remember that on Monday, April 8th, the day after WrestleMania, and just a few hours before we get the Raw after Mania, you can come and check out What Culture Live at Stand Up NY in New York. Get your tickets now at whatculture.com forward slash tickets. It's nice and easy. Your brain will remember. Let's up those doubts. Shane McMahon was the first thing we saw on SmackDown Live this week and he got booed out of the building straight away. And I thought to myself, well, that's a bit unfair. We don't know what Shane McMahon's reasons are for turning on The Miz. Maybe he found out that The Miz was having an affair with his wife. That wasn't the case. Shane McMahon is just a giant asshole now. However, this can get it up. He got the ring announcer to tell us that he was the best in the world three times because he didn't think he was doing a good enough job. And finally, we're paying off all this stuff from Crown Jewel, even though it's like 722 years later. But look here, the reason why Shane O'Mac is now a massive dick is because he feels like throughout his entire life, everybody has used him to get ahead. And the latest person to do that was The Miz. Mike Mizanin just wanted to win the Tag Team Championships, just wanted to impress his dad, and Shane O ain't having it no more. No one is gonna use his cojones for nothing. He told us that he is the best in the world, not because of this trophy, but because he was born that way. And I highly doubt he actually does think that, given that he did feel the need to enter the tournament at the last second, Shane. I'm gonna say, you're probably trying to compensate some, some feelings, you may want to go see a counselor or something. But then he told The Miz he'll see him at WrestleMania. We're going to get that match. And I tell you, all of this build has actually been quite nice. It's actually been quite fine. I'm intrigued to see what they do. Two thumbs up from me. Shane McMahon versus The Miz. Who would have thunk it? One tiny criticism I will throw out there is that Shane reminded The Miz that he does indeed work for him. And I thought we were putting all of this behind us. I thought I and you and all of us as fans were the authority now. What the hell were we all thinking? We got an eight-man tag after this, and it was a bit like a who's who in wrestling right now because we had Alistair Black and Ricochet team with the Hardys, and they were taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and Rusev as well as The Bar. Giving it up. It didn't get very far because they all started to kick the crap out of each other and then it ended abruptly because the New Day ran down and they cleared the ring and then focused their attention on the heels. I think Kofi Kingston even gave Rusev the trouble in paradise. And that was that. Hilariously too, before this big schmoz did break out, Jeff Hardy had hit a twist of fate and swung Tom Bomb onto Cesaro and was about to pin him for the one, two, three. And have you noticed that always happens in most matches? Cesaro either gets pinned or it looks like he's gonna get pinned. Poor, poor Cesaro. The Usos also cut a promo afterwards backstage saying they were pleased with their win at Fastlane and were questioning who they were gonna face next. And that is a good question. I don't have the answer, but the Usos right now are really good and probably should be being featured a little bit more. They're getting it up. AJ Styles and Randy Orton then started their build to Mania officially. And like I said at the start of the show, I don't know if this was scripted or someone just said, look, Randy, AJ, go out there and just talk like you actually would. But this was so much better than what we usually get. Again, we talked about it. Let's talk about it again. Nobody stares into a camera and goes, the soul in my heart fills me with rage and I have to go out there and slay the beast. I mean, The Undertaker does that. Let's not do it now. Anyway, this up. The whole segment focused around Orton being a WWE guy and AJ Styles being an indie guy, or at least that's the way he's been perceived 
for most of his career. So Orton walked down to the ring, he got a microphone and said, look AJ, while you were down in Florida getting a tan and hanging out with Dixie Carter, I was going to WrestleMania to take on The Undertaker. Stars fired back as he told Randy that he was proud of his indie heritage and that also, given that Randy seems to hate all of this, he knows a lot about it and finished it off by telling Randy, if you had gone to the indie scene, you would have absolutely failed. Was a great line between you and me as we are here on ups and downs. I can't see any indie promoter in the world looking at Randy Orton and going, nah man, I think I'll pass. Styles also made it clear that another reason he would have failed is that all he's got in his locker is a rip-off diamond cutter, hot damn son, and that to get to the top of the WWE, he had to get in using his father and then ride the coattails of Triple H, Batista and Ric Flair. It all ended with a WrestleMania challenge and instead of accepting it, Randy Orton just walked off, but you know we're gonna get this on April the 7th, and I think somewhere deep down in my brain, if everything goes right and everything comes together like that, this could very well be one of the best things we see on the dev of it. I am officially on board this train because it just feels good. And when do you ever board public transport and feel good? It never happens. So enjoy the AJ Styles Randy Orton train destination good times. <laughs> I regret saying that. Oscar was then taken on Sonya Deville and for some reason, we repeated the same finish we did at Fastlane, even though that wasn't very good. Take your finger, point to the ground, give it a down. Basically, Deville was on the ring apron and Mandy Rose was like scrabbling around, even though it was clearly done intentionally, and she pulled the skirting that confused Sonny Deville. She took her eyes off her opponent, Oscar kicked her in the face, and then made her tap out with the Oscar lock. Pathetic. They teased dissension between Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, which yes, friends, means throughout all of this, Oscar's SmackDown Women's Championship is playing second fiddle. Who wanted that? And if you put your hand up and say you, you are part of the problem. Also following this, the Iconics were telling Sasha Banks and Bayley to turn up to SmackDown. I'm sure they will, guys. I'm sure they will. I'm a bit scared about saying this, but I've got to be honest and I've got to go with my heart. But everything that happened with Charlotte and Becky Lynch this week, well, it was just okay. It wasn't bad. It's still going to get an up. You just saw the number on the counter go in the increased position. But yeah, it was like, it was just there. Charlotte said some stuff. Becky said some stuff. And onwards we trot. Oof. Becky came out, threw away her crutch, which actually makes no sense, because I saw her in a figure four last night. I don't understand why that would make your leg better. Surely it should be worse. And said, finally, not only has she got one over Ronda Rousey, but she's also got another one over Charlotte Flair, and now she can move on to WrestleMania. Then Charlotte herself did come out and say, don't worry about this, Bex. You're a flash in the pan. I'm the long-term hero. Let's go have a match in a few weeks. And they will. That was kind of it, too. I think maybe we ran a little bit too hard and a little bit too fast for this over the last few weeks, and then somebody realized, wait, we still got a lot of days till WrestleMania. What are we going to do? And the only reply was, just let them have a conversation. We cut to the back when this was done and we saw Daniel Bryan and Rowan leaving Vince McMahon's office and they've been in there to tell him what they thought of Kofi Kingston and it must have backfired because Vince McMahon said that those two are going to have a match later on against Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali. And that was an odd time to announce that match too because then we went to the ring and we kind of got the same deal. I mean, it was Samoa Joe and Andrade and they were taking on Rey Mysterio and our truth So basically four singles dudes having a tag team match, which is also what we're gonna get in two seconds. But still, listen to the names I just dropped. Of course this is gonna get an up. My only real point of sadness is the finish. Joe went for his Uranagi that he's been using as his devastating maneuver recently. And like the pay-per-view, although the roles were switched, Rey Mysterio rolled Samoa Joe up. Now that's cool in one sense, because maybe we're actually gonna get Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio for the US Championship at WrestleMania. And I think that will be badass but this is just 50-50 booking. I mean, why even have Samoa Joe beat Rey Mysterio 48 hours prior if 40 hours later, you're just gonna do the same thing but switch it up. Don't like it. Naturally, throughout all of this, Selena Vega and Carmella kept getting involved, but it was all for naught because none of their respective partners actually had anything to do with the finish. I stand by my up though, because as soon as this was done and Samoa Joe had realized he'd lost, he went absolutely crazy and went all serial killer. Honest again, he beat everybody up, including his own partner, and he just looks so devastating. I've already decided that WWE gave the title to Joe just so he could lose at WrestleMania, but for now, I'm just gonna enjoy the Samoa Joe ride 
coming to a Disneyland park near you soon. With no sense of what they'd just done too, we segued almost seamlessly into Daniel Bryan and Rowan taking on Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali. But much like I just said 47 seconds ago, look at the dudes in this match. You knew it was going to be good, and it was. So because of that, gets another up. There's the finger of, I don't know, power. There isn't much to say about this one though. As soon as Kevin Owens had been taking out, Rowan hit the iron claw onto Mustafa Ali and Daniel Bryan in the recyclable one. Well, they got the victory, which they probably should. He's a WWE champion. He should be on the winning team and he should do that until WrestleMania, where I think he probably is going to lose his championship to Kofi Kingston. And as I always say, who predicted that at the start of 2019? Not WWE. They didn't even know. All done on the fly. This all felt quite transition as well because there are a lot of things we need to know. Like what's Mustafa Ali going to do at WrestleMania? Probably take on Rowan. But more importantly, what is Kevin Owens going to do? He's only been back like, what, three weeks? And he already feels lost in the shuffle. WWE, take Kevin Owens, shine him up and push him to the moon. We all love Kevin Owens. Don't allow him to fall down in a sack of mud. We end with a massive up, however, as it was time to figure out what Vince McMahon's plans were for Kofi Kingston, and it fired me up to the point I wanted to run through a wall and you would have just seen a Simon shape. The main reason I liked it is because, again, it felt real. Big E and Xavier Woods were genuinely pissed off about what had happened to Kofi Kingston, and they weren't shy in telling Vince McMahon. They said, look, Vince, we do everything you want. We turn up to work. We even flew across the world to go to India, but you keep screwing us, and we ain't gonna put up with it no more. Woods even said that all of this was bigger than McMahon's ego, to which Vince replied he didn't know how that was possible. <laughs> Kaboom! The boss continued to run down Kofi though, saying that although you always have been great and you're a great athlete and we're happy to have you on board, you're nothing special and even though you'll go into the Hall of Fame one day, you won't go in by yourself, you'll go in as part of the New Day because that's all you're good for. And as Daniel Bryan mentioned to me earlier, when we were having our chat away from the cameras, you, my friend, are nothing more than a B-plus player. And you remember that? That's what the McMahons were saying to Daniel Bryan when he too was going for the WWE Championship. So that ties in. That's like a subplot. Daniel Bryan becoming everything he once hated. Eventually, Kofi had his chance to speak. And when he did, he absolutely smashed it. He said how proud and how happy he had been to be an employee of this company for an over a decade, but he's had to sacrifice loads of stuff, including recently missing his child's tooth coming out and him having the smile on his face when he found money under his pillow from the tooth fairy. But he's not a complain. He's never been a complainer. He just wants Vince McMahon to tell him what he has to do in order to get to that championship match at WrestleMania. And he probably regrets that now because McMahon went crazy on his ass. McMahon said that he will allow Kofi to have this opportunity as long as next week he beats Samoa Joe, he beats Randy Orton, he beats The Bar, and he beats Rowan in a gauntlet match. And I actually started chuckling to myself, because this was a bit like when you play a Japanese RPG and you get to the final boss, but before you're allowed to fight them, you have to go through every other single boss you've already faced at the end of a level. And damn you, Dark Chronicle. Damn you, you piece of shit. All the bad guys then attacked the New Day, but they were able to get the upper hand. And that is how SmackDown went off the air with Xavier Woods, Big E and Kofi looking like the damn proud warriors that they are. I really like all of this. I really enjoy it because I actually think, as I've already said, at WrestleMania 35, we're going to give the championship to Kofi Kingston. And that was never in the plans. We've just gone with the audience and what they wanted. And we always complain about that as well. Why don't WWE listen to us? Well, they are listening to us and it may even happen on the show of shows. And I think we should smile about that and allow it to warm our beds when we go to sleep at night. But what else do we have? Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about night. <laughs> which one of you, which one of you idiots purchased Simon Miller a ticket to the Bullet Club block party? Huh? Which one of you? It can't be Simon. Simon, you can't purchase your own ticket. You can't even afford that. Come on, man. And you, what, culture? Aren't you going out of business here soon? Oh, yeah, baby. Jeez. You guys. Oh, yeah. I can't. No way. There's no way y'all show up. Get those motherfuckers. I dare y'all. I dare you, Simon. Uh -huh. I dare you, what, culture? Yeah. I dare both of y'all to show up at the Bullet Club block party on April 7th at Red's Restaurant. Look at this! If I see your ass over there, it's on. Come on through. 
Hey, what told you? That's you right there. I knew it. I knew it. I said yesterday I knew it, and now I've got my proof. Tamatonga, Bullet Club. You want to challenge me, and you want to challenge what culture to a fight? You want to invite us to the block party? Well, we'll see you there, my friends. And also, for people out there in what culture land, I've been doing some digging. That's why I was away recently. Keep your eye on what culture wrestling today, tomorrow, Friday, all week. Something's coming from the Bullet Club. I know it. I infiltrated their system. This feud is about to get off the chain. <laughs>